the wife, we are told, is the, is the only, only unpaid, unpaid servant. servant. A more, more blatant, blatant lie can scarcely, scarcely be imagined. imagined. As every as educated, every educated person, person possessing, possessing the slightest, slightest acquaintance with the laws with the law of England, England knows, the law requires the husband to maintain his wife in a manner according, according, with, according his with his own social position. Social position. Has, in, has other words, in other words, to feed, clothe, and afford, and afford her all reasonable, reasonable luxuries, luxuries, which, which the, law, the law, with a view to the economic, economic standing, standing of the husband, husband regards as, as necessary. This, this although, although the husband, the husband has, has no claim, no claim on, the wife's on the wife's property or income, or income however, however wealthy she, wealthy may, she be. may be. Furthermore, it need scarcely be said, a servant who is inefficient, lazy, or otherwise intolerable can be dismissed or her wage can be lowered. Not so, that privileged person, the legally wedded wife. It matters not whether she performed her duties well, badly, indifferently, or not at all. The husband's legal obligations remain just the same. It will be seen, therefore, that the wife in any case receives from the husband economic advantages, compared with which the wages of the most highly paid servant in existence are mere pauper's pittance. This talk we hear ad nauseum from the feminist side of the wife being an unpaid servant is typical of the whole feminist agitation. We find the same deliberate and unscrupulous dishonesty characterizing it throughout. Facts are not merely perverted or exaggerated, they are simply turned upside down. <laughs>